Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, I've said, I've said, that, well, you know, in Danny, actually, it was Danny Cannon, our executive producer, who said that, you know, this one of the tenets of our show is, one of the bigger, overarching themes is, you know, what happens to a human when love is lost, when love is taken away from them, when they, when they don't experience love, when they don't understand what it is. You know, so it's all about this loss of love, the lack of it. Uh, that, and then what happens is you, you create super villains. You create people who have no empathy, who have no, you know, who put only themselves first, you know, and, and so that, you know, that's the overarching story that we're telling here. And the loss of, you know, Oswald's loss of his parents are an intrinsic, like, at least in the, in the story that we are telling in, in our show, the loss of his parents are the reason why he becomes the monster. Why there is no, ultimately, regardless of if there's something sympathetic about him or whatever people can see into that, regardless of all of that, you know, he's a person who uh, becomes a monster and deserves no empathy nor no sympathy. Like what he has done to innocent people since the pilot of our show, that alone in and of itself. You know, but again, the loss of his parents are, the, I would say, the main arch, the main driving reason why he puts no one else above himself. You know, ever for the rest of his life. So, yeah. so we've seen, we've seen uh, henchman penguin, we've seen crime boss penguin, we've seen mayor penguin. How is club owner penguin going to be different, and what's going to be the same about him? Uh, well, his, you know, his ambition grows every season, as we've seen. You know, it's like. You know, to get out from under Fish Moody, that was what it was in season one. And then season two, you know, it was like trying to be, you know, maintain, be the king of Gotham that he wanted to be and failing miserably. Season three, the mayor, like running for mayor, trying to learn the city, failing at that as well. You know, season four, it's like taking all those lessons we learned and, you know, basically going back to being the king of Gotham, you know, similar to where he was in the beginning of season two. However, with much bigger ambition and also much more connections, you know, like he, he is not only just playing, you know, in the, the organized crime scene of Gotham, it's not just a hand in hand, he's putting his hand directly into the GCPD, directly into Jim Gordon's business and, um, you know, and basically using the GCPD as a tool. To against Jim Gordon, and I think like you know, there's something about learning about there's something about the ambition of that, like you know, and using it against the person that again, like I mentioned earlier, the guy who saved his life, the reason he's alive, and like you know, I think it shows a whole new ruthlessness and a whole new um, I don't know, just a whole new uh, drive and ambition of the this year. Yeah. I wanted really to say I wanted to say this today. I'll say it now because I have the opportunity. But like, what's happening? Like, go, us going into season four. Season four is such a big vote of confidence, and there's so many things about Gotham that weirdly mirror all like these, you know, coincidences with our own personal lives. You know, like what the characters are going through. We and also when you live with a character for four years, you really you look for those patterns. It's like when, when you know what? Oh my God! It's like what's happening to me is kind of what's happening to him. And, you know, and one of the big examples is like we have that sense of confidence as actors having a fourth season and having like you know that the the okay go from Warner Brothers to like just go for it. And I think all I think that's actually reflecting. And you'll talk to all everybody else, but you can see that that's all reflected into all of the actors who have been at the show from the beginning. You know, so we also all have that. The the characters themselves have that same confidence that the actors do, which is exciting. He's so, ready to go. Just wanted to say. Hi. <laughs> Oh, absolutely, because again, that's the other freedom that's unlocked for Penguin in this season is because when you're mayor, you know, you have to, regardless of how, well, <laughs> current politics now it's the only, but I, you know, you have to conform to a certain, you know, certain ideals, you know, you have to behave and, you know, approach, you know, just even like show yourself in a different way. You know, now that he's not mayor anymore and he's just like, 
he's letting his, he's just, you know, he's not just, but he's the king of Gotham Underworld, king of, you know, owns the Iceberg Lounge. He can let his freak flag fly. And, you know, you can see that, you know, right when we launch season four. You know, it's like, he's given a license to be whoever the hell he wants to be, you know, and, and not apologize for it. And that's really exciting. So, yeah. Penguin is an incredibly ruthless, cunning, powerful character. Yeah. This year, one of the most interesting arcs, I thought, was your kind of journey of self-discovery where you get to play a member of the LGBT community sure. and community that's currently incredibly un underrepresented on film and you're one of the clear stars of the show. What does it mean to you to be able to play a member of the community on film on a major network show? Well, it's an enormous responsibility, and you know, and it's a really complicated answer because obviously, I am, I as a gay man, it's incredibly personally important to me to uh, to not to. Uh, to not be cynical, to, to, to be honest with the character and true to the character, true to, you know, what his singular experience is. And also, like, any time you can show diversity on television, especially LGBTQIA, you know, is an amazing gift. However, I will say, though, in that... I have a hard time accepting Oswald as a member of that community because he, as what we see with the Riddler, he has absolutely no idea what love is. He has absolutely no true concept of what he is because what he does when he falls in love is that he rips the person that his loved one is most interested in out of his life. He murders that person. Like, that's someone who, you know, is obviously so damaged and so, like, is the moral compass is so off. You know what I mean? I have a really hard time, like, ascribing his experience, you know, to, like, that of an LGBTQIA. You know what I mean? I, I love that, just in the very least, we, we, show, we showed that... You know, we, we portrayed, you know, the, this connection between the two characters, whether you want to call it love or whatever, but my favorite thing about doing that, and this is a testament to the writers, is that none of the characters used it as a derogatory thing against Oswald. Absolutely. You know, it wasn't treated like, nope. you're gay, I'm going to blackmail you. Like, it was never right. about shaming you for being in. Mm -hmm. It was about, like, you know, getting one over on him because he's a fucking asshole. <laughs> but, you know, like, but it wasn't about him being gay. Which that's, yep. person, that's the one, that's what I'm most proud of. Yeah, it was about just that story. another relationship. It was just another it, relationship. It, yep, and it wasn't treated, perfect. you know, yeah. In so, that respect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank, thank you for asking. Thank you for the answer. Thank you guys. Have fun. Take care. Thank you.